all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Hello and welcome to this latest video from Next Gen 15. You can also just listen to this on audio if you like. I'm Angus Savage and we're going to be talking today about the final weekend of schools rugby and under 18 rugby across England uh, as we came to the end of this uh, this awesome little sort of month long, five week long period of being able to enjoy the game again. Uh, before we get cracking on with that though, can I please remind you to subscribe and to hit that notification bell. That way whenever we have any new video content you'll be alerted about it. Uh, and if you could hit like and uh, and drop a comment in as well, that would be massive for us. It just gets us in front of more people, which means that we can keep producing the sort of content that we hope you enjoy and keep promoting and pushing the school game. That's enough of that business and all the rest of it though. Uh, let's get cracking with the rugby. Friday was the big day. It was when most of the games were going on. Uh, just a, a massive, massive occasion loads and loads of schools playing their one and only fixture of the of this little mini season uh, loads of guys making their first 15 debuts loads of guys playing for the very very last time it was enormously emotional right across the board some of the messages we were getting in were just fantastic from pipe bands leading people out to songs in chapel on the or on the greens beforehand um, we had a live stream of Reeves v Felstead and it was it was just incredible to see guys getting to to turn out, seeing parents on the touchlines as well. It was um, it was a real pleasure to to be at. It was a real pleasure to hear about, and it really made made things feel really special after what's been obviously a a pretty horrific year and and in, and in many ways one of the hardest years of school rugby there's ever been because there's barely been any school rugby. One of the final games on Friday, actually, I think it was a six o'clock kickoff, was uh, Coles v Latimer, um, Latimer Upper, sorry, while we were on our live stream. Um, cracking game, both teams, their one and only game of the season, just so awesome that they could get out and, and you know, have a run out, experience that, that first team jersey for the, for the last time and in many cases the first time. Uh, we had some awesome interactions <laughs> across Instagram and Twitter with, uh, with some of the people involved. Um, it went 22-5 in Latimer Upper's favour, um, but just a, a fantastic day out for or evening out for for both sides. Some fantastic images that were coming through, and um, just just so awesome to to see guys getting a run out. We then headed to two sides that have actually played a decent amount of rugby in this this little shortened season: uh, Gordon's and the Oratory. Um, twenty two twelve to to the oratory, but but again, just the occasion was everything with this. Uh, the Gordon's pipe band piped the teams onto the field. Uh, it's just an amazing atmosphere. Um, you know, Gordon's missing a few players to to Harlequins duty the following day, but you know, just loving being able to put a side out. Similarly, the oratory, fantastic performance from them, but but just having players out on the field and the messages coming through just sounded like it was. An absolutely awesome, awesome day for everyone. One of the biggest games of the day was definitely Hampton v Brighton College. Uh, Hampton have been one of the the really busy sides through this period. Uh, I think this was their fourth, maybe fifth game. Fourth game, I think. Uh, they've beaten Wellington College, Epsom College, Whitgift, and they were just uh, loving life being out there on the field. Um, it was also director of rugby Sean Thompson's last game in charge before he moves on to pastures new next year. So it was a it was a really big emotional occasion for them. Uh, a couple of players missing, but but that was true for everyone. In contrast, Brighton College this was their first game uh, in over a year. This was the only game they were playing this year. And um, director of rugby Nick Boy sent out letters to all the players beforehand, um, and just a really really special atmosphere. Um, and, you know these are two two really friendly schools anyway. Um, and it was just fantastic performance from Brighton College, who who won thirty six fourteen. Um, but you know both sides, so much to be proud of. I think the the big regret coming out of the end of this game was that we never really got the chance to see both these sides consistently in action week in week out for an entire season. Because I think all the signs pointed towards the fact that these would have been two absolutely superb teams. Um, you know, just look at what Hampton have done in the last few weeks, and then. What Brighton have been able to do in just in just one game, uh, absolutely fantastic, and um, two great schoolboy rugby teams. 
Another game that really interested us was uh, Henley College against Cardinal Newman Rugby Academy. Cardinal Newman, who are now part of the Ealing Trailfinders kind of family, Henley College equally are. Um, and Cardinal Newman, uh, they've rocketed with this partnership. The the last three or four weeks, I've seen them put in some sensational performances, uh, some uh, really terrific, terrific rugby, and that was utterly on display again this weekend. A uh, 49-0 win. It, was, it wasn't really about the numbers or, or the result. It's really about how this, this school has transformed uh, its rugby offering um, through its partnership with Ealing Trailfinders, and I just think it's so exciting for you know the the months and years ahead uh, what what they're going to be doing, and you know what a fantastic way for them to finish off. Tough one for Henley College, but um, I think that's really all. It's all about what's being done at Cardinal Newman. It's 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 amazing to see. On to a game that was just a real classic in my eyes: uh, Marlborough College against Bishop Wordsworth. Uh, two sides that are really closely linked. I mean, geographically, they're not too far apart anyway, but also Bishop Wordsworth's former head of rugby, uh, Terry Gilmore, now head of rugby at Marlborough College. Uh, really cracking game. First and last game of the season for Marlborough College. Who you know, they, The week before, they'd been handing out stash and stuff. It, it, there was a real buzz of excitement around the place. Bishop Wordsworth had been a little bit more busy a few days beforehand. They'd... Uh, they played a game and won, so they were they were on a bit of a high, and they'd also had a really cool Leavers versus Stayers game, um, which I know had, had been really enjoyable for both sides. Um, as it turned out, probably that little bit of extra match practice made the different for Bishop, the difference. Sorry for Bishop Wordsworth, they uh, they won it twelve seven, but this was all about the occasion. I mean, head to both both teams' Twitter pages, you'll you'll see the sort of messages of just kind of joy and enthusiasm from both both schools both sets of players uh it, it was just a really cool occasion and um two sides that you know if if things keep going the way they are they're definitely going to be right up at the top end for for the next few years so definitely worth uh worth keeping an eye on to our live stream game then reeds versus felstead and just a privilege for us to be able to to stream that game uh yeah we we've been sort of championing what this period is all about um really it's about experience it's about being able to go out and enjoy playing school rugby wearing the famous shirt you know these shirts have so much history in them more in in many cases than most clubs in this country in some cases more more history than the rfu itself um and this just epitomized everything about that the the pride that both sides showed the ambition that both sides showed the support from the parents on the touchlines, the enthusiasm of both coaches. And I do want to give a shout out to Tony Talbot and Andrew Le Chevalier because they were just superb. All they wanted to do was, was talk about their players and how proud they were of them and how glad they were to be giving experience to guys who you know, deserved it and other guys who, who might not have got it in another year, but who through their sheer effort through the years deserved to to have a run out it was it was exactly what this was all about and the rugby on the field was incredible um some absolutely brilliant performances uh tom jones uh, fell stead with a brace uh, just from both from 80 meters or so just fantastic um fell stead won it 26 17 actually an incredibly impressive feat given that that was their first and only game of of the year i don't think they'd played since uh december 2019 um reeds have had a couple of warm-up games against gordon's uh under their belt but this was this was kind of the big fixture for for them as well in that it was the final run out um they handed out i think it was eight maybe nine debuts um and felstead with a similar number um just a, a joy to be a part of a joy to watch and um yeah both teams had had every reason to be hugely proud and the the moment of the game for me came after the game with uh, each team in their in their separate huddles, having team photos all taken by the parents who'd finally been able to go and watch them, uh, you know, it's that's what school rugby is all about. And uh, it was a, as I say, a, a privilege to be there and awesome, awesome to be able to witness that. One of the earlier kickoffs on Friday was a classic encounter, uh, weirdly a classic that doesn't happen that often though. Uh, Warwick versus Dulwich College, two of the two of the teams of the last 10 years you know but between them they have five under 18 schools cup titles uh they met in one final 
uh, Dulwich was sensational that day. Um, so it almost felt fitting that these two should uh, should come across each other in a fixture they don't normally get to play. Yet they're such giants of of schoolboy rugby, uh, Warwick and Dulwich College, and. Um, First and only game of the season for both sides, yeah, as as with so many of these games. Uh, it went 28-10 in, in Warwick's favour, but uh, it, it was, again, all about the occasion and the experience and the, the fact that these guys were pulling on the shirt once again. Um, it was awesome to see footage coming through of, uh, of Warwick being clapped onto the field by, by basically the rest of the school. Um, just so cool to see. And then photos of the lads afterwards being presented with their shirts. You know, the... That was what the whole point of these games was was all about, and um, yeah, for both sides, whether you know win or lose, it was about that experience, getting getting your shirt finally, um, getting that experience of playing alongside your mates once again, you know, for the for the younger guys, getting that debut, getting to be able to say you've played with some of these older guys who you know you've looked up to through your years. They're always a year ahead, playing playing a level of rugby ahead, and finally you get to run out alongside them. It was yeah, another just really special special occasion. Finally then, on the Friday fixtures, uh, Wirral Grammar School against St Anselm's College. We don't actually have a result for this, but um, Wirral Grammar School school took the victory. We, we know that much, and a uh, yeah, huge amount to be proud of with them. Two from two, an unbeaten season for them. Um, but uh, I think more more about the, I mean, as with all these games, the, the occasion, the experience, etc., but also the, the sense that something is building there, and... Uh, you really do get that impression that, that things are, are really on the up over there and really, really developing. And so too, it's an Anselm's College who who had a game under their belts uh, early on in this little mini season and, and did really well in that and by all accounts performed outstandingly well against Wirral as well. So I think two sides to keep an eye on as we as we move into a new season in September. Definitely, uh, definitely worth watching what's going on in the Northwest. On to Saturday then and the final school rugby action that we'll see in England until until September. Um, all happened down at Isha RFC, a festival between Epsom College, Millfield, Sedbury and Whitgift, uh, four of the top teams in the country and four teams that, that went hell for leather over the course of Saturday in, in just an epic, epic afternoon. Um, six really, really close games. Uh, the whole thing could have gone any way. Uh, but I think it's important to talk about the the backdrop of this and kind of the circumstances in which it was played in, where sort of within a, a week prior to, to the game, um, it sadly uh, came to light that Sedbury old boy Henry Foster had uh, had sadly passed away uh, in America. Um, Henry was part of the treble winning Sedba side of uh, 2018, the... Um, Daily Mail Trophy winners, the Rosson Park um, HSBC National School Sevens winners, and uh, the Sedba Tens winners. Um, you know, a historical uh, three peat there. But the um, yeah, it was it was a tough week for everyone, uh, for anyone that had seen Henry play, for anyone who who'd come across him, and and particularly obviously for his family, his friends, and the and the entire Sedba community. Um, so it was on a sad backdrop that this uh, this tournament began, but it played out um, exactly how I think we would all imagine Henry would have liked to, with a huge amount of fun, huge amount of spirit, and uh, four teams just giving it absolutely everything. Um, and if we focus in on the rugby, uh, it was an epic day, um, absolutely epic day. Um, it was won in the end by Millfield, but they won it by a single point on points scored. Uh, it all boiled down to the very last game of the day where they were facing Epsom College. Um, and basically, Millfield and Whitgift um, had drawn 7 all in their fixture. Uh, and Whitgift had already beaten Epsom College and then beat Sedba 17-12 uh, in the penultimate game of, of the whole thing. Millfield, meanwhile, had... Uh, Obviously had that draw against against Whitgift. They'd then beaten Sedba eight seven, uh, a late try being disallowed for Sedba, so just just sneaking that win, Millfield. Uh so it all came to a head for them, uh, heading into that last game. They they knew what they needed to do. Whitgift had already set the points total that needed to be hit. Uh so all Millfield had to do was make sure that first and foremost they beat Epsom College. Uh and then to make sure that they scored twenty two points or more. And they did it exactly uh 
they scored 22 points uh 22 points to 15 as it was in the end and uh took took the title by by one point on points scored uh so fantastic effort from millfield um but the very fact that the points scored was the measure um that was being used uh tells you everything you need to know about the spirit of this competition it was all about getting across the whitewash and uh we saw some fantastic rugby um length of the field intercepts like proper gambles and stuff really fantastic rugby um yeah we're gonna have a pretty detailed report coming out on it soon our man peter crawshaw was was there to witness the whole thing from start to finish and um, just a, an epic epic day uh exactly what this whole whole thing has all been about just getting out there having some fun playing rugby you know it was great to see after the game yeah, uh, what socialising can be done, being done between the four teams afterwards. Um, it was just just awesome, and everything that that rugby is all about, everything that schoolboy rugby is was all about. Um, yeah, fantastic from Millfield, but um, fantastic from from all four sides, and uh, I think all four definitely did Henry Foster proud. So if we just take a moment to reflect, really, on the the last five weeks of school rugby and what it's been like what it's meant um you know th- there was a long long time where we thought there would be no rugby until september 2021 um yeah, so on a personal level that was uh that was a daunting prospect you know we we've we've gone the best part of a year without really being able to work so that's it's been tough for us it's been tough for players it's been tough for schools it's been been tough for families you know it's it's not been easy for anyone and uh it felt like a real dose of normality, of uh, of excitement, and um, just of something to be proud of. Finally, in in seeing people get out there and and playing, and and pride really was the word that always kept coming to mind whenever we watched a game, whenever we we live streamed a game, whenever we were involved in any capacity. Um, seeing how much pride each player had in in being able to play with their mates in being able to pull on their shirt one more time, in being able to represent the school, represent themselves, represent their families. Um, pride from heads of rugby and directors of rugby, I, I still think the most powerful thing I've I've heard in this last five weeks was our, our interviews with uh, Paul Burke and Sean Thompson at the end of the Epsom College Hampton game that we live streamed. And I'll, I'll stick a link in so you can you can have a look at those um they both spoke so brilliantly about what it meant to all of the lads being out there how proud both of them were of the efforts of their their boys throughout not just the games but throughout the last year without games um you know it's it's been a tough old ride for everyone um and seeing people go out there and and actually get to play this game that we all we all love so much was was just awesome um yeah quite quite moving in some ways um you know the from little things and i won't drop them all in it but but uh little things like seeing little groups of parents peering over hedges to try and catch a glimpse from seeing people emailing us asking if they could uh have live stream links to people uh, trying to arrange fixtures at the last minute once they realised they could arrange fixtures to, to players getting in touch saying, you know, why is such and such being streamed? Why is this not being streamed? Why is this game not happening? Why isn't this school playing? And it wasn't complaints. It was people with genuine enthusiasm wanting to be a part of it. And uh, it, it's it's been heartwarming to see that level of enthusiasm for school rugby. Um, and, and long may it continue. Um, and I think that's the takeaway from this five weeks. It's been an epic period uh, just to witness the essence of what school rugby is. You know, most years we all end up getting caught up in saying the right things, doing the right things, talking about development, keeping players in the game, that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's all obviously important. But sometimes it means that we forget to really talk about and express what matters in school sport which is that it's about the players having fun the players having pride in what they do um enjoying it remembering it forever you know if if i also play hockey and cricket and tennis and who knows what else 
It's not a reflection on the school whether or not I keep playing rugby later or whether this is as good as the rugby ever gets because there are so many other options available to me and we only have so many hours in a day as we move into adult life. Uh, but what is a reflection on the school and the coaching is how much I enjoyed my time there, how proud I felt to pull on that shirt, whether I remember pulling on that shirt when I'm an adult, whether whether those memories are, are special to me, treasured. That's what it's all about. And that, certainly to me, and I think to a lot of people, is what is special about schoolboy rugby and what makes a schoolboy rugby programme special. It's that. We saw it in abundance over the last five weeks. It's been awesome. Of course, what we've also had over the last four or five weeks has been the um, Under-18 Academy Games. Um, or I think it's still been called the Under-18 Academy League, actually, despite the fact that it's it's not been a league format. And uh, I actually want to clear something up before we kind of get stuck into to what's been happening there this weekend because uh, it was pointed out to us um, that we've we've possibly come across uh, overly negative about the under 18 academy uh, sort of games and stuff over the, over the last month or so which uh, has been far from our intention i think the um, the impression is that we've we've probably made it seem as though academies are, are stealing players away from schools um, really our, what our point has has been is that it's unfortunate that uh, the window that was created for for playing uh, was kind of just thrown out both academies and schools and, and it was left to them to negotiate with one another uh, who had access to players when. Um, this is both both academies and schools have been put in a, in a difficult and somewhat unfair position as a result of that. Uh, so really our, our, our point has been that as quite often perhaps happens in in under eighteen rugby um in England that people are people are forced into a situation where they they end up having to make quite difficult compromised calls between one another um because of decisions made elsewhere and that's that's not on the academies it's not on schools either. Um, there's been some tremendous rugby on both fronts and there's been a tremendous amount of pride in being able to put, pull the shirts on on both fronts. Uh, so we do want to definitely make clear that we've we've loved the academy action and uh, yeah, there has been some epic action uh, and it's been really cool for guys to be able to pull on that shirt. Yeah, whether they're, it's one last time and it's the the pinnacle of their of their rugby career really or for other guys where it's a last chance to pull it on before before going on to to professional honours over the course of the summer and for other guys you know the under 17s and whatnot an inkling into what's to come this time next year or this time in six months i suppose more likely uh that's really what it's been all about and it's been it's been brilliant to witness so we're just going to rattle through a few of these games um london irish and bath both met um London Irish coming in without a win. Bath had just won to their name and cracking game. Um, just went down to the wire with Bath edging it 26-24 to, to finish up two wins and two losses. Uh, for London Irish, a hugely, hugely talented squad, but uh, just didn't quite quite have the edge in any of their games. Um, but a hugely promising group, uh, as told by the fact that so many have got contracts coming up. Um, but a cracking effort from Bath to, to get the win away from home there. Another cracking game we had uh, at Aylesbury RFC. It was Wasps 29, Sale Sharks 19. Um, two sides that uh, came in with records that weren't the best, but had been in really tight games. They've been really close. Sale had, Sale had lost uh, two of their three games going into this. Wasps hadn't, hadn't picked up a win yet, but um, they managed to pick one up in this in this final game and uh, and thoroughly deserved it. They, they were outstanding uh, by all accounts at Aylesbury um, but great great to see both sides managing to to come away with a positive result um, when all was said and done so um, two two top sides and uh, plenty plenty of exciting talent coming through from both up at Kingston Park we had two teams who've been awesome throughout this period Newcastle Falcons who have been outstanding um, only dropping one game against Yorkshire Academy when they rested a whole bunch of guys who are going to be going on to professional honours next year um, hosting Leicester Tigers, who obviously won the tournament back to back in 2018 and 2019, uh, and then shared it with London Irish last year. 
Uh, Newcastle, though, just barnstorming performance to win 43-29. Um, it's been an awesome campaign from Newcastle, and we've really, really enjoyed what following what they're doing on social media and stuff as well. They've made a real thing of um, creating a sort of mentality that that this is your last chance, your last opportunity to to just go out and and play and enjoy yourself uh, in that famous shirt. Um, you know, creating um, team videos to the with the Last Dance soundtrack in the in the background and stuff. It's been it's been really cool and um, really fitting that they should should end with such an awesome. At six ways, um, Worcester Warriors and Bristol Bears went head to head. Two sides that have found they're going a little tough throughout this um, this campaign. Um, it's kind of surprisingly because both have have some epic epic players, but. Um, you know, I guess in each and every game, some, someone's got to come out on the wrong side. Uh, on this occasion, it was it was Worcester Warriors, a, a cracking effort from Bristol Bears in the final final game of the season for them, um, taking the victory 26-5 and uh, a really promising group with some players to to definitely keep a big eye on in the future. Um, true for both sides and uh, really looking forward to seeing how they go next year as well. The final game of the weekend came on Sunday when Yorkshire Academy hosted Northampton Saints. Uh, two sides have been epic on on social media, just in terms of promoting the fact that their young players are getting a chance. Um, Yorkshire Academy won it 50-27, uh, just another epic performance from them. And I really want to talk about Yorkshire Academy because the enthusiasm coming from them across social media, but from all their coaches as well, from the schools, the players participating, it's been amazing. Um, you know, a year ago they were in a pretty perilous situation, um, but you know the i have to say with the results on the field the the performances on the field the enthusiasm on show um it would take a very very brave person to do anything other than support them fully from this point onwards um they they've been absolutely epic and um really pleased for them to end on such a high after after an awesome five weeks of, of rugby from them as well uh, same is true of Northampton Saints. So they've been fantastic. Um, they've played some great stuff. They've showed huge enthusiasm for their players, and you know that's what it's all been about for us. And and it's been a bit of a shame that there have been a couple of sides who haven't, for one reason or another, and and it's hard to know why, um, who haven't been able to show that level of of enthusiasm and promotion publicly for what's going on. I'm sure they have in private. Um, but these two have been at the forefront of just pushing what an epic job these young guys are doing and how you know how great it is to have them out playing from a competition point of view though i suppose the weekend was all about really two games harlequins v saracens and exeter chiefs against gloucester um heading into the weekend saracens exeter and gloucester were the only three sides with unbeaten records heading into it so in an unofficial sense you know one of them uh, was going to probably end up being the uh, the sort of 2021 champions in inverted commas, um, but of course the for the drama the dramat the dramatists in us all um, the Exeter Gloucester showdown was was kind of the one the one you'd like to see. But of course, in order for that to happen, Harlequins were going to have to do their bit against Saracens, and wow, did they do their bit. A 57-14 victory, stunning performance from a Harlequin side that actually have been pretty outstanding throughout this. They may have dropped one game, but in the others, they have been scoring points at a rate of knots with some truly, truly fantastic performances. And I actually think when this all shakes out, they could be the guys to keep a real eye on in the long term. Saracens as well, though, they may have they may have been on the wrong side of a tough day uh, on Saturday, but they've been outstanding throughout this competition. But what this game really did was uh, was give us a chance for that Exeter v Gloucester showdown. Two unbeaten sides going head to head. The winner was going to be in effect the unofficial champions because they'd be the only unbeaten side. In the end, though, Exeter Chiefs did what what Exeter Chiefs do certainly at senior level, and it seems to be translating across to the to the academy. A stunning performance, 56-7 against Gloucester, who have been outstanding uh, through this this sort of five-week period. Um, but it was just just an astonishing effort from Exeter Chiefs, who have had um, Gareth Steenson, of course, the legendary former fly half, who retired back in November, um, has been helping them out. And actually, he's been the main source of, of information on social media about what's been going on with the Exeter Chiefs Academy. And thank and thank God for Gareth. You know, we've seen some great behind-the-scenes footage of them celebrating after after games. Um, 
and it's just been a fantastic series of performances from Exeter. The only downside being so little has been known about what what's been going on, but clearly uh, a group of players to to keep a massive eye on uh, as things go on, uh, and they go through the season unbeaten. So what we've done is create a bit of an unofficial table, um, just collating all those all those results, and uh, we've sort of ranked the teams according to. Uh, wins versus losses and then where that is equal we've uh, we've done it by points difference so out on top obviously extra chiefs followed by harlequins who've just uh, racked up serious numbers of points for a fantastic season uh, newcastle falcons and the yorkshire academy in third and fourth both have been outstanding uh, and particularly brilliant in terms of sharing um, what's been going on and giving real really good profile for all their players um, followed by Gloucester and Saracens, the other two teams with, with three wins and two great seasons from both of them as well. Uh, we then move on to the sides with sort of even seasons, two wins, two losses, Leicester Tigers, Northampton Saints and Bath. Um, Leicester Tigers been really close actually. They could have they could easily have got to four from four. Uh, really tight games for them. Uh, in tenth then we had Bristol Bears, followed by Sale Sharks and Wasps with the teams with just the one win. And then in 13th and 14th, London Irish and Worcester Warriors, who sadly didn't manage to, to pick up a victory. Um, but of course, this is just our unofficial little ranking, but uh, it gives you a flavour of what the season has looked like in its uh, its truncated format. But of course, not everyone has played everyone. Things have been a bit geographical, etc. So it's uh, very, very much unofficial, but uh, certainly huge congratulations to Exeter Chiefs. Now this... Uh, Weekend, we also saw an under-20 international as England and Wales took each other on. Um, again, like a, like all the under-20 internationals through this period, it was an unofficial game, a training game, etc. Um, the RFU have been talking about it a little bit on their website today, um, just with some quotes from, from Alan Dickens, the head coach, about kind of what they've been up to, etc. And um, sounds as though they had a training session from Eddie Jones and his coaching staff, um, which I'm sure gave the players huge, huge motivation. Um, but it was it was following on from two warm up games for England against uh, against Scotland up in up in Newcastle in the previous two weeks, um, and and now they faced Wales, uh, Wales who were a little more under practiced uh, than England. Um, but uh, yeah, so not not a huge amount known about this one, but. Um, we're we're going to be finding out plenty more as as things move towards the Six Nations later on this month. Um, conversations with all the relevant unions, and uh, it's going to be a full program of of information, and uh, it, it should be really awesome to to follow and keep up to speed with. To the game itself, it ended up forty one five in England's favour. Um, probably not that surprising given the the amount of practice that England have had relative to to Wales. Um, but certainly a very promising sign for England. You know that's two of the two of the five opponents that they'll face in the Six Nations uh, that they've beaten quite handsomely. Um, so I suspect they'll be they'll be very pleased with that. Um, yeah, you know, obviously yet to or certainly yet to publicly announce the the squad for that. So I'm sure a lot of the players involved were playing hard for their places in the team. And if you if you look at the team sheet there, it's uh, it's a pretty epic team, uh, and there's a number of number of players who uh, who weren't playing that certainly are likely to be in the squad, um, and who've been playing an awful lot for their Premiership clubs this season. So things are looking up for England under twenty heading into the Six Nations, that's for sure. So that's the weekend that was. Um, all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for for getting involved, for for all the info that you've given us and and tagged us into across various platforms over the course of. The weekend and indeed the the last four or five weeks of of school and under eighteen rugby, it's been it's been absolutely epic to have it back. Um, we're not going anywhere though. We're going to be knocking around as always, pestering you. Um, we're going to be bringing you plenty of coverage. Basically, Scotland is opening up, and there's going to be loads of schoolboy rugby in Scotland towards the end of June. Um, we're hoping to live stream a couple of games. Um, just uh, just waiting on final confirmation on a couple of those, so we should be able to bring you plenty of live rugby. Um, and then it's uh, it's into the Six Nations, which should be awesome, out of 26 nations. Um, and then loads and loads of summer, I think. Uh, I've heard rumours that teams, uh, teams are going to be including a lot of uh, schoolboy leavers uh, across the sort of summer adult rugby seven season. So we'll be keeping tabs on all of that. And then, you know, we're going to be into pre-season and, uh, 
and hopefully a, a proper season of schoolboy rugby. Uh, heady days indeed. Um, all that remains for me to say though is thank you very much for watching and um, if I can please remind you again to to subscribe and to hit the notification bell you'll receive any new new videos or, or little bits of audio like this straight to straight to your inbox. Um, if you could like and comment that would be fantastic. Uh, it makes all the difference in terms of uh, being able to allow lots and lots of different people to be able to access what we do. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, you can hit us on Twitter and on Instagram at NextGen15, that's at NextGenXV, uh, and our website, which actually has just had a bit of a redesign, we're pulling a few tweaks on that as we speak, so do give us your feedback and let us know what you think, www.nextgen15.com, that's www.nextgenxv.com. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Been good, been good fun talking to you. Cheers. Cheers.